Hi guys, Pokepill here, and welcome back to Pokétech. Today, we are looking at Malice's Doors, which is a, I guess you could say, cosmetic aesthetic site of their uh, mod, but it's adds some really awesome stuff, and we're going to get straight into it. So you'll immediately tell we are outside of Pokétech. Uh, the entrance is like the other side of that hill, but uh, yeah, we're outside because I thought, well, we need a structure and stuff for this, so we might as well be here. But the first thing I'm going to show you is the doors that this mod adds, because I mean, it's Malice's doors. Now this mod does require Malice's core, which you can uh, get. I will put the mods to these in the description, so you guys can go check those out. And uh, you can play it yourself. But we're going to get straight in it here, so the first set of doors you will see are openable by hand, yes. Uh, the gl wooden glass doors, so... If you know wooden doors, it's cool. But this uh, mod adds animation to doors. So if we actually go and get some normal wooden doors and we place them down like so, you will see they have animation. Woo! Awesome. So that is the normal wooden doors animation. But the glass wooden doors are cool. Well, I mean, you can use redstone signal to activate them or you can just open them by hand. So that's... The glass wooden doors. The glass wooden doors are made with free wood one side and glass, uh, free glass the other side to make the single one of those. And you can put them side by side with wall either side and uh, if you open one it will open both. So there you go, that's cool. And they have their own sound. And then there are the uh, iron glass door which is pretty much the same apart from instead of wood it's free iron and free glass. Uh, the only thing difference with these is you can't right click it, you can't open it by hand, you have to open it by the old fashioned redstone method. So the uh, iron bar, uh, the uh, jail door is pretty much the same uh, apart from it's made out of six iron bars and uh, it acts quite literally the same as the uh, blah, 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 iron glass door so you'll hear it's got its own jail sound. Sorry, I could do that all day. But these act just like the iron ones where you can't actually right click them. Now we move on to the, the factory door. Now these are made by two gold at the top, two gold at the bottom, and iron in the middle. Because, uh, I mean, the gold stands for which way the doors are going to open, basically, with this. So you can put these side by side and they will both open if you give them redstone signal or if you right click them. So if we... Oh, listen to that sound. That's the factory door, so you can still click on it, or you can activate it by redstone. Whichever way, it works perfectly fine, and it is awesome. So, that is the factory door. Now we move on to the laboratory door. This is a up-only uh, one, so you can't actually put these side by side, these don't work like that. But, uh, this is two gold and four iron, and you can get a laboratory door. This can be activated by hand or by redstone, as you probably already noticed that, but uh, I thought I would uh, put that out there anyway. So, next we move on to the Shoujo. Shoji? Shoji. Shoji doors? Shoji. I believe it's Shoji. But uh, yeah, the Shoji doors. Jo doors. So, these are basically typical Japanese style doors. Uh, you can actually see through them. So. You can see the cobblestone just in the background, but if we had an open area, you would be able to see through them a lot easier. But uh, these are made with free paper and free glass, and you'll get the shoji door. So, they are really cool. They even have the uh, little sound that you would expect from that sort of door. So, that is basically the doors. Now, there is one more door that I need to show you, which is, in fact, the garage door. Now, you can make multiple ones of these, but the garage door is made with five wood and one piece of glass, and you'll get one. Now, with these, you can actually combine them, and if you uh, open them, then you can open the whole lot. So, I'm going to get rid of these. There we go. So, but these do need a redstone signal to activate, so if we give it a click, it opens like a garage door. And if we close it, it closes like a garage door. So that is awesome. But those are really simple. You can just combine them any way you want. So if we got rid of those top ones, get rid of those. Yeah, so that's basically how the garage door works. And uh, so on. Like that. 
So that's cool. I like the garage door. They're really... Well, I guess they don't really add much because, I mean, you don't have garages in Minecraft. But it's still cool. It still works. And it's awesome. So that is awesome. That is the basics of the doors. Now we are going to move on to some more technical stuff. Which, first thing I'm going to show you is this little thing, which is the player sensor. Now what the player sensor does, if you're near it, or if a player is near it, then uh, it will activate and give a redstone signal. So you can see there it's activating a redstone signal. Now these are uh, placeable on any type of, well, not any type, because I mean you can't place it on glass or anything. But uh, they're placeable on ceilings, so you can put the one up there. They're placeable on floors, so you can put one down there. And they're placeable on walls, so I got one there. But how these work is if you put one on the floor, and you can see this now, if I put one on the floor, I have to stand on it and then it will signal. Same with if you put it on the ceiling. It's a straight up down signal. Whereas if I put it on the wall, it's basically a free by uh, free area. So if I was, well I'm technically on this block in front of me right now. So it will activate. And the one that it's placed on is basically uh, like here, this like air block, where it is at the moment. So it activates from there. We can stand here and it activates, and I mean we've got one here so it'll activate, but otherwise that one wouldn't probably, uh, the other side, about here wouldn't actually properly activate. So that is the uh, player sensor, but to make this you need three glass, two iron ingots, and one redstone, and that is the player sensor. So it will work pretty cool, and I like how it works. So that is cool. Now we're going to move on to the different things that actually make this mod really awesome. So we've got vanishing blocks and there's four different variants of this. There is wood, iron, gold and diamond. Now these are made similarly the same but they have completely different mechanics to each other. So the wood is made with four sticks, uh, four redstone and a ender pearl in the middle and you'll get four vanishing uh, wood frames or wooden vanishing frames. The iron is much similar apart from instead of sticks you use iron ingots and you'll get four. Uh, the gold is also similar and so is the diamond apart from instead of the iron ingots or the sticks then it's gold. And same with this one instead of gold, iron or whatever it's... Well actually you can't actually craft this by the looks of it at the moment. So that's a bit annoying but these ones are the most top tier so I would expect diamonds for those. I mean it would be predictable right now every now and again you will notice with these that they do shake so yeah you go you can see that one shook and you're gonna shake shake please shake your maracas okay you're not gonna shake well with these uh, if you have these ones the wooden ones which are, there you go it's shook with the which are the technically the basic ones uh, if you put them let's I'm gonna do a 9 by uh, a 3 by 3 area and you can get a block, so I can get some wood, uh, some stone, some glass, and I'm going to get some lapis, because why not? And we're going to stick a piece of glass in the middle, so you can just right click and you can place whatever you want. So lapis either side, and then we're going to put stone like so. Now the wooden ones act like each other, so basically if a wood's touching a wood, then it'll activate it. So there we go, you can click that, and they will all vanish. So that's why they're vanishing blocks. Click it again and it will stay. Whereas the difference between these and the, uh, well, these iron ones, if we go like this, and we do exactly the same pattern again, this is going to work differently. Uh, let's do this and do that. Missed you. There you go. It'll only activate the bottom ones. So the iron ones actually stay to what they are. So if you had, let's say, stone at the bottom, uh, and stone all around the outside, so let's get rid of these. Oops, I forgot that was actually the ore, and I just broke it. So if we add stone there, it'll activate all the ones that are stone and nothing else. So if we wanted to activate the glass, we'd have to give that a redstone signal. So that's cool if you only want to separate certain blocks. Uh, now, the gold ones act slightly different to that as well, as in the fact of... Uh, they do the blocks as well as like these but the only difference is that if we get some magenta wool and we get some of the blue wool let's say we wanted magenta like that 
and we had blue wool. But these are the same metadata, so if we did this with iron, then it would activate all of the wool. With this one, uh, the gold activates only that type of metadata, so it's touching the magenta, so it's activating that. Because this is a 2, the blue is a 3, so there you go. Now the diamond, now this is where it gets technical. The diamond one, if we get rid of that and we right click on it, you can see it has an interface. Now you can choose if it activates the one above it, or above it, that one. You can activate it below it, north, south, east, and uh, west and east. Now let's say I wanted the one above it to activate, because I mean if we didn't have this active then... There you go, it can only activate the one that it's touching, so if we pressed up, it'll activate both. So that's cool, I like how that works. But uh, let's say that I wanted to customize this so I could have this one lapis, and it'll vanish. I wanted this one to be cobblestone, it'll still vanish because it's saying that it wants the one above it. Now let's say the one above it wants to be an inverted, so if we wanted to invert it we could do this, click it, that one will vanish, and once that one's back, it will send a signal to this one to vanish instead. So we can choose if we want to invert them, but we're going to choose that not to be. Now you can also change what duration you want this to take. So at the moment it's on 8 ticks. Of course there's 20 ticks in a second, so we're going to change it to 20. And it will slowly vanish and slowly come back because we said this one's 20. Let's say we wanted this one to do it instantly. Gone, back, gone, back, gone, back. So you can change how long it takes to vanish and so on, but of course it's not activating these because we haven't specified it to. So that's cool, you can make no end of doors and different things with this, and uh, you can basically customize it to what block you want. The mod author has said that he's tried to make it, make it as mod compatible as possible so that it will work with other mod uh, blocks and stuff. So that is cool. Now we're going to go inside of our little building here. So you can see that we've got wooden ones activating there. So cool. And now these ones are the iron ones. So there's iron in the middle and iron around the outside. So if we click these, of course the iron ones in the middle will go. But if we click this button, all the ones around the outside go. So that is really cool. I love how that is. But uh, yeah, so that's the basic things. And of course the golden ones only activate their metadata. Now the next thing you're going to notice is if we go outside, this is made out of full cobblestone. Well, apart from that side with the wool and everything. So this is all cobblestone, but did you notice that when we were inside, it's glass. So how did we do this? Well, there's actually a thing called a block mixer. Now what a block mixer does is it mixes blocks together. So you can see here we got two types of block. We got the glowstone and we got uh, acacia wood. So let's say I wanted magenta wool one side of my wall and I wanted blue wool the other side of my wall. I can put these together and boop. We've got this which is of course magenta and blue. So blue one side, magenta the other side. Now you can, act, when placing these, these are a little bit tricky to place, so uh, if you wanted it to go downwards and upwards, then you got to place it like that. And if you wanted it inverted, you got to shift, right click, and it will shift it. So normal right click is that, shift right click is that. Now one thing you probably noticed here is we've got redstone block and uh, iron, and it's emitting a redstone signal because we've got a redstone block. So that is actually pretty cool. So let's say you wanted a redstone block and iron in the same place, you could basically put it so that your wall is like this, and of course it's got redstone. So it is a little bit buggy with the texturing, it doesn't always know which side to do it. But uh, yeah, so let's say you wanted a full wall like this, but you still got redstone activated the other side. So it acts quite cool like that, so I love how that actually works. So that's cool. And glowstone does much the same apart from it's not redstone is it? It's a light source. So if I got rid of this it would dim the place down a bit but if I put it back in it lights it. So that's how we lit this outdoor area. If it was night time you would see all of these are actually lights. So glowstone activates like a light source and redstone activates like a normal redstone block. So that is all cool and good. 
But now we're getting to the really cool part. I mean, we had block customization where you can have two-way blocks or you can customize however you want your walls. So, I mean, this place, this could be like fully made out of glass and no one would know because the other side, it was cobblestone. But, uh, yes, yeah, so we can actually customize our own doors. So, if we go in here, you'll see the door factory. I didn't show you how to make the block factory, did I? No! So, block factory is two pistons and six iron. Really simple. But, or the block mixer, sorry. But, 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 but. Now we are on to the door factory. So, I'm going to show you the recipe for this quick before I forget. It's two redstone, an iron door, four iron ingots, and piston. And you'll get the door factory. Now, what the door factory does is it allows you to build your own doors however you want them. So, let's say I wanted a door that had a glass pane in the top. Uh, the top, that which is that one. And I wanted the bottom to be cobblestone. But then I also, I just want the frame to be, let's say, glass. Well, actually, no, we're not going to choose glass, because we've already got glass pane. So, we're going to choose iron. So, iron block. Oops, I forgot to go in there. There we go. So, I wanted the frame to be an iron block. I wanted the uh, window to be well, a window, and I wanted the bottom to be cobblestone. We can click build door. Oh no, we can't because we haven't gone through the properties. So if we go onto the properties, you can see movement. We can customize how we want it to move, so we can do vault, rotate. Uh, we're going to do rotating for now. We can choose how many ticks it takes to open the door, so we can do it instantly at zero, or we could do it at six, which is the normal rate. So we're going to leave it at that. It, does it require redstone? So does it like to be an iron door or whatever? Uh, is it a double door or is it a single door? Well, we're going to have it as double door because why not? And what type of sound does it want? So do you want pneumatic, glass, jail, soji or shoji uh, or vanilla? So we're going to have the vanilla sound. Then we click build door and there we go. We got our own door. So as you will see, we got cobblestone in the bottom, glass pane in the top, and uh, iron around it. If we activate it, you can see it has the classic rotation options. But let's say I didn't want that. Let's say I wanted to be a fancy pants and make my whole door, apart from of course the glass, out of uh, diamond. So we got diamond frame, got diamond bottom, and then glass top. But I wanted this to open as a double door, but in four different ways. So we can specify uh, sliding four different ways. And then we want it to be, let's say, a glass sound door. And then, of course, double. And we only want it to be activated by redstone. Compress build. We can go outside, and I will show you how to do this. So let's get rid of these. Put those down like that. And then we'll click it, and it will open in four different ways. So there you go. So you can walk through it. And like that. So that is really cool. I love this mod. You can customize doors in any way you want. You can customize blocks in, well, however you want. So, like, redstone and wool, or sponge and glass and something. But, uh, yeah, so it's really cool mod. It's... I wouldn't say it's too big a mod, but it adds some cool stuff, and to be honest, once you get into it, it's probably bigger than you would expect it to be, so it's cool, it's awesome, and I really do like it, and I hope you guys do too. So if you enjoyed this video guys, then remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more mod spotlights, let's plays and odd sort selves, then remember to subscribe to my channel and go check that out. And uh yeah. So remember to leave me some feedback in the comments section and uh hope you enjoyed. So I have been Pokepeel. This has been the Malice's Doors mod and also Malice's Core because that's what it needs to run. Uh, this has been Minecraft 1.710. It's also available on 1.7.2, uh, not 10, 1.7.2. It's a pretty new mod, so uh, go check it out. Give the uh, mod for some love. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed. I've been Pokepeel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!